Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, and then my name is Erica. And before I start this video, I just want to give a disclaimer that my sister's dog is here. We Your dog sitting for my little four-legged nephew and he can be loud so if you hear some background noise I'm sorry yet dogs are dogs and they do dog type things so yes but and he's right here come on okay serious Erica but today I'm gonna be talking a bit about something I've never spoken about on my channel. I I'm talking about a, a YouTuber who is in the true crime community, and I know I've never talked about this before, so I'm not really sure how this video is going to be received by my audience, but hopefully it's received well. But anyway, Today I am talking about Stephanie Harlow, and as I said, she is a true crime YouTuber. And I am talking about why I unsubscribed from her channel. Now, before I get into this, uh, oh jeez. So before I get too deep in into this i just want to give a disclaimer that if you watch her and he, and if you like her i'm not telling you to unsubscribe i'm not saying she's a bad person i'm just saying these are the reasons why as a former subscriber i had to unsubscribe the the first Thing I want to mention and unfortunately I don't have receipts for this because the video was since deleted but I'm going to say it was back in 2017 but if you know when this was posted you can correct me down below but she posted a video about um, Bella Thorne, and I guess she had a makeup line called F Filthy Fangs, and she was talking about why she doesn't support B Bella Thorne, and now I realize a lot of people don't support Bella Thorne. I'm not a big Bella Thorne fan myself, but the reasons she gave for why she doesn't support Bella Thorne just came across as very like slut shaming and shaming what she chooses to wear and shaming her like sexuality and it just rubbed me the wrong way and I think I even commented something to her in the comments that it rubbed me the wrong way especially since at the time while Bella is still in her early 20s, I believe. But at the time, she was in like her early, early 20s, like 20 or 21. And like, at that time in your life, you're experimenting with a lot of different things and you're not who you're gonna be for the rest of your life because you're still trying to figure that, that out. And and I mean, it must be even more difficult when you're in the spotlight like Bella Thorne. But anyway, she was shaming like what she chooses to wear and how she's very open about her sex life. And she posts a lot of suggestive content. And I mean, she framed it as like, my young nieces are big fans of her and I don't think she's a good role model. And she's like, well, she was a Disney star first. So she has to know that her audience is younger. And here's what I have to say about that. 
a lot of D Disney stars in particular, but other stars too that start off young. And they have a, an issue transitioning from like their very young, like kid phase to like their young adult and then their adult phase. And I don't think people should be pigeonholed and people shouldn't be held to a standard just because they were on a kid's show a, a few year, years ago. And I, I just didn't like how she was interacting with peop people in, in her comments. Like, she wasn't very receptive to criticism. Like, a anybody who disagreed with her, she would kind of attack them and it, it just rubbed me in the wrong way and then this brings me to my next point which is that she argues with a lot of her subscribers and and i don't mean argument i i don't mean argue in a way that it's like a productive and healthy argument i mean she actually fights with people and I understand she's human. I've had my share of fights on the internet, but she's constantly like, no, I feel like, and I'm gonna say, I feel, oh my God, my little four-legged nephew is playing with my sneaker. I might have to pause this to remove the sneaker from his mouth. Oh no. Okay, the, the sneaker has been returned. But my next point is... Okay, so uh, unfortunately, when I try to record this part of it before in the recording failed, so I'm going to try to pick up where I left off. I, I'm pretty bummed about that. So if I look like I'm about to cry, it's good. Kind of because I am... But anyway, let's let's not cry, Erica. But I, I I think I'm at the point of this video where I talk about her projecting her own values and her own feelings onto the victims of the true crime cases she covers. And one thing I I noted in my notes was a lot of times. She seems more intent on telling a story than on telling them the story. And you, you might have no idea what I mean by that because it's just something I came up with. But um, what I mean by that is that she likes to give all these unnecessary details. Like, for instance, if, if the... If the case is set in a place that she's not from and it's like this beautiful place, she'll spend a lot of time just setting the scenery and talking about how beautiful it is. And then she'll also spend a lot of time. It is set in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, but more specifically, the Balencia. And the Balencia is an exclusive apartment tower that was built in 2008. So this is a fancy place, right, where fancy people live. It's located at 454 St. Kilda Road in Melbourne's business district. From the outside, it looks so cool. It looks like this glistening skyscraper. It has this black mirrored edifice. It just looks like this enormous black glass tower. And inside, it holds 23 floors along with all the amenities that a fancy rich person could ever ask for. They've got a 24-hour pool and spa, a 24-hour gym, 24-hour security, security cameras. They've got a weekly book club. They've got a weekly wine club. They also appear to have an Italian restaurant located right in the building. So these people during quarantine, they were set, right? They didn't have to go anywhere. And I mean, even on a regular day where there's no quarantine, you would never have to leave home if you don't. And, and this is something I do appreciate about her, but I appreciate it with a caveat, which I will tell you in a moment. But she 
talks a lot about the victims and who they were, which I think is great because unfortunately I believe a lot of victims of true crime cases become a lot lost in the sensationalism of the entire story. So I appreciate that she does humanize the victims, but stock up on drinks and snacks for the drive if you were me. Of course, Missy most likely didn't eat gas station snacks because she was healthy and I am not. And he was supportive of it. He understood that she had put her passions on hold for quite a long time to be an amazing mother to their daughters. And now that the girls were more grown up and independent, it was important to Missy that she pursue something that gave her personal fulfillment. And it was important to him to give her the space and freedom to do that. But he wasn't super involved with it on a regular basis. I think he felt, as many husbands historically have, that Camp Gladiator was something to keep Missy busy and out of the house so she wouldn't become a bored and miserable housewife. It was only after her death that Brandon realized the, the issue I have with the way she does it is a lot of times I feel like she'll pro project her own thoughts and ideas onto the person and hopefully I'll be able to find some clips that show a examples of this because I find that she'll like add to the story like she'll be like oh I can just picture this person doing this and it's like why what is that adding to the story besides like you adding your own little flair to it and again this is just my opinion but that's another issue I've had with her in content and Another one is she always says, and I'm sure if you've watched a video of hers, you've heard her say it, but don't come for me. And while, like, as a public figure, I understand that she probably deals with a, a bunch of hate. But, but also, like, she'll say that, and it's like she's almost anticipating the criticism before it comes. And I understand that it gets exhausting to be criticized all the time, especially for like silly things. But I kind of also believe she's trying to shut down any arguments or any people that might be trying to tell her, hey, Stephanie, I know you see it this way, but here's another way of looking at this situation. And as someone who has a, a fairly sm small channel, I I've dealt with some very nasty people, but also I don't, I try not to let the nasty few taint the way that I engage with people as a whole. I try not to come at anybody who's disagreeing with me as like a hater because I'm most of the time I'm going to try to assume the best and that they're just trying to share their opinion and make an argument that I might not have thought of. And I think that a lot of YouTubers have this issue of trying to just shut down a a any arguments and trying to label a a anybody who's arguing with them as like detractors and haters. And like, I understand why they do that. They do that for their own sake. But I also think I also think that's a way of, of shutting down any kind of criticism, which I don't think is good. And uh, and my next point is that she engaged in what I call what uh, uh, aboutism, and then this was back in June of 2020 when, like BLM, there were a lot of protests for BLM and 
she posted a, a picture of a, a young girl that was unfortunately K-I-L-L-E-D by gang members. And she said something along the lines of everybody's so passionate about BLM and police brutality, but where's the same energy for the, this girl? And I feel like... I feel like that's just a way to dis- I'm sorry about my dog. And this is a serious topic, so I don't want to laugh right now. But my dog is being odd. But anyway, but I feel like that's just a way to detract from a, a movement that is very important. But I saying, yeah, and this movement is, is great. But they're, they're not uh, addressing this, so th therefore they're not a good movement. And I, I just think that's harmful, especially since she is a, a white woman. So who is she to police the way um, black people react to R-A-C-I-S-M and about tragedy like I, I it's not her place to do that she he shouldn't be telling black people what they should be upset about because she's not black and neither am I and I think that, um, I, I think that's the end of this video thank you so much for watching if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up and if you have not already and you are interested in seeing more of my content, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.